Hey folks, everything new under the sun. We are under attack effectively by by Russia, by hackers, um, whomever it is. And it's under the guise of uh, a plausible deniability. Um, uh, and uh, of course, no one is admitting to anything. And both sides are doing the same. Uh, Russia is uh, cyber attacking the U.S. The U.S. is cyber attacking Russia. And we're going to take a look at these things because this, this is not a coincidence anymore. Even the FBI has come out and warned the United States of this. So it's happening. No one's admitting to it. Both sides are doing it. And we are in the middle of uh, what is a very unconventional World War III. This is from AmericanMilitaryNews.com. FBI warns of cyber attacks on U.S. food plants after a dozen, 12, hit by mysterious fires. The Bureau uh, of Investigation Cyber Division issued a statement last week warning of potential ransomware attacks on agricultural industry as more than a dozen food processing plants across the United States suffered damage from mysterious fires. What's happening in Russia? Mysterious fires. There was even more today. If you're watching on your uh, favorite uh, uh, prepper YouTube channels, you know they mentioned it over the last couple of days as well. Uh, John Holler has mentioned it. Cyber actors may perceive agricultural cooperatives as lucrative targets with a willingness to pay due to the time-sensitive role they play in agricultural production. So I thought it was going to be an economic war, to be honest with you, uh, weapons of mass economic destruction. We knew it wasn't going to be conventional, uh, but I was mistaken. They're going after the food, and this is going to make it real tough on everybody. When food shortages uh, start, they're effectively causing uh, worldwide famine uh, with these cyber attacks this is a big deal you start hitting the food supply boy you take out a, a, a society very very quickly it goes down very very quickly when people start getting hungry they start getting desperate what has china been doing this whole time well with all the sanctions on uh, russia they've been buying up all the the russian oil the russian food whatever everything they can buy from uh russia they're they're doing it stockpiling it when you know in the mean while uh, meanwhile, the rest of the world is uh, uh, not buying anything from Russia in the name of, uh, you know, supporting Ukraine. Uh, the world is shooting itself in the foot. And I thought this from the beginning. It was a bad idea, the sanctions, but there's everybody's on board. I see on Facebook people talking about this, you know, uh, uh, sanction Russia and do all these things against Russia. But yeah, Russia deserves it. Um, but you got to look at the collateral damage and that collateral damage is you. And that collateral damages me, that collateral damages uh, my kids, uh, businesses around here, everything. You need to consider that. We are in war, uh, but the public has no idea that it's happening. Here's another one. Uh, Zero Hedge, Russia investigating fuel depot explosions and fire near Ukraine border amid a pattern, quote unquote, of incidents. A massive fire raged overnight in the morning, uh, into the morning and daytime hours at a Russian oil storage facility. This is no coincidence. There was a massive fire at a research place too, which I mentioned the other day. While uh, widely circulating social media footage is fueling speculation that the fire could have been the result of either Ukrainian missile strike or perhaps covert sabotage. Do you recall what Israel did to Iran with its centrifuges? Well, it hacked into the centrifuges and the control mechanism, the computer that controlled the speed of them, and effectively remove the limit on the speed of the centrifuges, uh, meaning that they would speed up and speed up and speed up until they effectively destroyed themselves. This is exactly what's happening with these fires. I believe that uh, the hackers are going in via computer. Uh, they're shutting down uh, maybe uh, uh, fire uh, systems, fire determinant systems, sprinkler systems maybe, uh, and they're doing other things. They're causing uh, mechanized uh, um uh, units or machinery uh, to overload, to overheat, to go too fast or, or too slow or, or whatever the case may be uh, to the point where these places are uh, catching on fire. There was a massive uh, Walmart uh, a warehouse fire as well. Uh, interestingly, you know, in the last couple of weeks, you look at all the fires happening. There's a lot of interesting things happening. Our food supply, our, our food supply and, our, and the supply chain uh, is very, very fragile, folks. We are on the cusp of, uh, I, I think, something big. And I wish I was more prepared. 
Stretching back a further uh, into the last week, regional media notes a string of fires at sensitive facilities. The Bryansk fire is the fourth fire in a short time since fires at Russian industrial development infrastructure sites in uh, Tver, Korolev, uh, Korolev, and Kineshma last week. Uh, Friday had seen the facility belong to Russia's secretive Central Research and Development Institute of Aerospace Defense Troops uh, go up in flames. Seven killed, apparently, related that. As for Monday's incident, Russian en uh, emergency uh, response authorities have since said the causes of blaze is under investigation and that no, there were no casualties. To be honest, this looks exactly like uh, 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 Israeli-Iranian warfare. I think the rest of the world took, the cue, took their cues from what Iran and Israel are doing, where no one actually uh, uh, directly blames each other because they don't want to go to all-out conventional war. Uh, but both sides know they're doing it. The world knows they're doing it. Uh, but no one is, again, coming out and going to co complete conventional war. This is effectively a way to do World War III, to have real effects on the ground, uh, and no, and everybody is kind of willing to let it go by because it's not a you know a, a conventional uh, bomb or or shooting on uh, a country's sovereign uh, soil. So you know who this affects. This doesn't affect the governments of the country so much and the, and the rich people. It affects you and I, who are having food prices go through the roof and all these things. So we are being affected. We are in the middle of World War Three. This is a story again on Zero Hedge. UK's largest supermarket begins rationing cooking oil amid supply disruption. Now, I think it was Italy. No, I think it was Indonesia that has banned exporting of all edible oils or cooking oils, you know, olive oil, uh, vegetable oil, whatever it may be. They're banning exports. UK is now limiting or rationing oil supplies, cooking oil supplies. This is a real good reason for you maybe to go out and get a couple extra um, bottles of vegetable oil, olive oil, whatever it is you may use. Think what you may use in the next six months, and it could be a good idea to get that now. Uh, as I say, and it's, it's, it's a silly saying, but panic before everybody else panics. Just like the toilet paper shortage of, uh, what was it, 2020, I think uh, this will be the oil shortage. It's going to be toilet paper shortage 2.0. Uh, I'm not kidding. Get all the basic ingredi ingredients that you need that you can't otherwise harvest, grow, etc., so you can grow vegetables, you can grow pork and chicken, you can you can grow all these things, but uh, if you don't have any dairy and maybe any butter to fry them in, any oil, well, they're not going to be as interesting and tasty to eat, right? So this is partly luxury, but partly oils are good for the digestion of uh, food and the proper, um, um, you know, uh, to, to help your body uh, break down uh, whatever it is you're eating. So it, it's not just... Uh, to make food taste better and be more palatable. Uh, but that goes a long way. And, uh, you know, like I say, you can grow some things, but some things you can't do. Maybe are get dairy, uh, have milk, have butter, have uh, cooking oils, these sorts of things. So these are the things you need to stock up on because they're going to be in high demand. When people start running for the shelves, and I, I can't believe the government, uh, to be honest, hasn't already declared a food emergency. I think in... Uh, I think in the U.S. somewhere they declared a, a food emergency. I forget where it where it is, but anyways, it's something to be prepared for. If record high f food prices weren't enough, the Russian-Ukraine conflict has choked off the world uh, world of sunflower oil supply, forcing the largest supermarket in the U.K. to begin rationing. Now, at Tesco, with more than four thousand retail stores, there are now buying limits. So this this image is a buying limit due to the conflict in Ukraine. It may be necessary to substitute f sunflower oil for other oils. Now, even if there's no short supply of uh, olive oil, vegetable oil, the fact that sunflower oil is not available means that the people who are consuming that will be moving to other oils. That means if you were using vegetable oil or olive oil, that means there's going to be a larger demand for the oil that you are using. So even though it may not be the oil you use every day, there's now people coming in who are otherwise using other oil uh, to buy it. So supply demand, prices will increase and uh, supply will decrease. The UK's biggest retailer is exp experiencing uh, sourcing issues. There you go. You won't be able to find it. Uh, again, this is toilet paper 2.0. Uh, and 
it's going to be significant and there's going to be some pain. And it gets worse from here, people. Have I told you before? I have told you before. 2022 does not get better. It continues going downhill and it's going down faster and faster. We are getting very, very close to, uh, you know, worldwide economic uh, uh, collapse and absolute famine. This is uh, the economic collapse blog.com. Why are so many mysterious fires happening at food processing plants across the United States? This is from yesterday. And it talks about uh, there's a, a fire at General Mills. Early morning, General Mills led first responders to the roof of the company. The call came in around 345, it says. First responders discovered hot spots where a vent stack makes contact with the roof. Uh, anyways, they, they put it out, they removed roofing material. The fire erupted less than 44 hours after a plane crashed uh, at a General Mills facility. So we have a plane crashing into a food facility. You know, what are the chances of that happening with all the other things? When's the last time you heard of planes crashing into buildings? It was probably 9-11. It just does not happen that often. So it's uh, quite a significance. Uh, and the uh, the writer says, is this just a coincidence that there were two major disasters at General Mills facilities within 48 hours of another? Don't be mistaken, folks. We are in World War III. It's coming down. Uh, this is happening all over. I believe, I, th I think this, this right now is how U.S. and Russia are battling each other. Um, apart from supplying weapons to Ukraine, I think uh, there's cyber attacks in Russia with the fires, and I think Russia's coming back with their own hackers and attacking our food supply chain. This is a big deal. You remove the food, people will get desperate. It becomes Mad Max very, very quickly. Folks, uh, be prepared. Uh, make sure you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and your Savior. And Savior. Um, Grow your faith. Have You need to have faith in these last days because you're going to get really um, depressed otherwise and worried. Uh, we are not uh, given over to a spirit of fear. Um, those who are Christ followers, we have faith in the Lord and he will sustain us and supply our needs. And if he will, he will take us out of this world. And I hope he does with the rapture. But prior to that, the Bible says there's going to be hard times coming. Remember, we ain't even seen the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse yet. This is simply the build-up, the warm-up, the warning time when Christians should be saying, I see this, this, and this happening. This also happens in the beginning of the seven-year period. That means we're very, very close. And you need to be prepared. And you need to be prepared enough to provide for your neighbors who think you're a tin foil hat wearer and you're a crazy Christian for believing the last days are upon us. And they are sticking their heads in the sands. Basically, everybody around uh, is, is sticking their heads in the sands as it relates to this. I'm going to leave there, guys. This is this is an emergency. This is an emergency um, and one that nobody seems to be aware of, although it's getting into mainstream media a little bit more now. Be prepared, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.